దేశానికి ప్రజలకు సేవ చేసేందుకు ఏ రాజకీయాల్లో కొచ్చానన్నారు జనసేన అధినేత పవన్ కళ్యాణ్ ఇండియాలో అనేక డివిజన్స్ ఉన్నాయన్నారు ఒక వర్గమో ఒక కులమో కాకుండా మనమంతా ఇండియన్స్ అని ఫీల్ కావాలన్నారు పవన్ ప్రజల కష్టాలేంటో నాకు తెలిసిన నాయన కామన్ పీపుల్ తరపున పోరాటం సాగుతోందని చెప్పారు అమెరికా టూర్ లో ఉన్న పవన్ హార్వర్డ్ యూనివర్సిటీ విద్యార్థులతో మీట్ అయ్యారు దేశం ఏపీలో ఉన్న పరిస్థితులపై మాట్లాడారు మహిళలకు రక్షణ లేకుండా పోయిందన్న పవన్ చట్టాలని కఠినంగా అమలు చేయాల్సిన అవసరం ఉందన్నారు ఎడ్యుకేషన్ పై మరింత ఫోకస్ పెంచాలన్నారు పవన్ కళ్యాణ్ For me, the reason why I came into politics was, I could see the division is how it is hampering the progress. And all of us, we believe we belong to one sect, one class, or one region, or one religion, but we don't feel the complete Indianness. We don't feel, for example, the North Indian leadership, they don't know much about South India. For example, Gandhiji traveled all over India. He knows Nuke and Kanur of India. Today, how many leaders, either from South or from North, actually know about the entire India? Today, I know more about America and more about West, what's happening in the West than what exactly is happening in the East. My dream is, the way we have achieved freedom is a lot of bread and oil, a lot of sacrifices. And the kind of passiveness that society shows. So many problems are there. Recently, I've been to one of the other places called Chicago and this thing. One couple of areas are not done. No one knows, not in the government, they have an idea. For the last 20 years, around more than 20,000 people died for the three cases. And it is sometimes Uh, I don't know why there, what exactly causes the TV disease for the people who are removed and are removed in the area. Who knows? Even the people who came from Harvard and they made uh, some kind of research, but somehow they could not completely zero down this book to the world. And none of the political parties could address the issue. And constantly the people who resulted they were very poor. And no one is it, their voice was not able to reach the government. So somehow they had approached me and I went there and after seeing the pain, after seeing what they are going through, when I address the issue, at least the government, government machinery had moved and I am trying to do something now. And this is the plight of our nation and this is that I have a constant attitude what our political leadership does to our country and to our state. And for me, For me, this is deeply painful. And constantly we feel the pride of our country and we feel so much on the insurance of our nationalism through the form of cricket, but actually no one addresses the two issues of India. And for me, the pain is all about we really highlight the rest of India. But deep down there are so many issues. I'm talking about today about India is a global power, a rising power. We talk about the development. India is a really developing. We can show the uh, data and statistics to say that India is a growth of this percentage and that percentage. But in reality, to whom, to which group this development is actually reaching? In every point, in any particular situation, we say that. They're going to promise, they're going to bring on the moon for you. We're going to show this. But actually, in reality, people don't ask for big things. In 2007, I was working for the political party of the law group, which was established by the brother. And I went there in a district in Telangana State. It is a lovely, it's a lovely private district. And like any other guys, even my party people told me, Please, you have to address it, and let's go to one of the time today, and let's see that what we want as a party, what we can do for you. Can you imagine the power of government? What they would care, what they care would do? And I said, what made them not to go ahead and do it? Because nobody, not that I'm saying the entire political class is like that, but the majority, they don't have any interest. For them, what is the next problem? 
what is the next way to earn, uh, to get benefits? It is like the after polishing attitude of a political class is really denying the development of the underprivileged. And this is what really pains me. And if you ask me like to do talk about how the global emergence of you know, like you know, how India can rise a global power, I don't have that kind of experience. And there are enough experts, there are enough intelligent intellectuals out there who has a better idea about it. What I can say is that I can speak on behalf of common men because I have been there, I live there. And I come from a lower middle class background. And finally I became an actor and I could like to address these issues. And so that I know the pain of each one. And we talk about women empowerment. For me there are two key issues which I would like to bring it to your notice today. One is about the women empowerment. There is heavy budget for everyone and everything. And women empowerment in our schools, there is no personal hygiene for growing girls and they have enough money and somehow it does not reach them. That's the problem then. And today we want, women are the biggest force, we want to empower women and first of all you have to give them a healthy lifestyle. Even the so-called uh, social uh, welfare hospitals are there and they are heavily being neglected. And these are the issues which are burning issues. And also the major problem in India is the women's safety. The women's safety is such a big concern. And what Gandhi says, in the middle of the day, women could really walk, that would be the right. That's, a, that's where we have achieved the freedom. But in reality, even in daytime, if someone has to go, that's quite a risky situation out there, even in my own kids and kids, what they go through. So for me, what I wanted to do is, first of all, we should have a great, very powerful law and order situation should be there. Law and order should be really controlled, have a great say in safeguarding women. To get one day by an act, when I say yesterday, it is passiveness which really pulls back India. To get one day by an act, because right from my childhood, I had seen with a group, my sisters and aunts, I know that how they used to suffer. They never used to feel safe to go out of the roads. To get one Nirmaya Act, it took government for 60 years plus. That to has to happen in Delhi. Unless it happens in Delhi, they don't pay us. And recently I was talking about the, for example, the state has been divided, and we come from a unified Amitra Pradesh. When the state has been divided, what they did was, right from 1972, both the states want to get separated. This is an example of saying how the past the the government It took them from 1972, both the states wanted to get separated. They wanted to have their independent uh, state. But somehow the government, central government said, well, they made them to be together of the supply. They had their own problems. Different because they could never, whatever they had promised to make them together, so no one had fulfilled it. So what exactly happened? Within no time, by the time I was growing, they started speaking even the same language. They speak the same language. We just the dialect is different. And they started and they loved the problem is the whatever they had been promised, it was not fulfilled. Suddenly the anger was being shown on another region people, which is no fault of theirs. I don't belong to the generation. I don't, I don't know what exactly happened around 40 years back. It was not under my control. But the problem, but I am facing the problem today. Somehow, it is quite a painful because why? We will say India has to be one. We should feel the oneness here. One way to say in India, that the constitution says we should be together, we should bind, we should we should be as one individual entity and force. But in reality, they keep on dividing. As long as the divisive politics and vote bank politics are there, these kind of issues keep arising, and India's progress will be constantly will be getting taken back step.
We go one step forward with this kind of divisive and non bank politics, constantly accept, accepting, I mean, constantly looking at people as a non bank. For me, I know a lot of political, political leaders, they don't look at people as people. People are filled with emotions, people are filled with a lot of pain, people are filled with love. But what they look at them is that's my own bank. This particular task is my own bank. The particular region is my own bank. They don't see them as humans. In politics, we should get a human idea. They are filled with emotion, they are filled with love and affection. We have to address that issue. Unless we address the individual as, we have to recognize as individuals, not as a whole bank. Till we do it, India is going to get affected by this kind of legacy politics, this kind of whole bank politics. I'm just saying this because for me, the reason why I came into politics was. I don't want another generation, the future genera generations has to suffer like me. I don't want them to suffer. I don't, today I'm, I mean, I'm, I live a comfortable life. I don't, there's no need for me to come. But I said, as a fucking, I felt like a service. I can't ignore. I'm a thinking mind. I said, I feel painful. I feel extremely like, sad looking at the light of the situation. Somehow, what best I can do, I don't have a strength. And I'm not, I don't belong to any uh, huge political party. I'm not extremely rich. But I said, what best I can do within my means? Then establish the party. And we started highlighting each and every issue. Knowingly, getting into politics is like a, it's a battle which cannot be won. And a destination which cannot be reached. And know it and still I came into politics. We, we should understand we have to define development. Development is for each individual means different. For me, a lady in Adilabad, her development is only a water every day. That's not development. For someone else, it is another kind of uh, development. Maybe a housewife, it is nothing but to get her TV outright. And for a student, maybe a simple student, he needs a playground to play. This is what development means. Here we say that we, India is rising, India is achieving great standards, but the standards are not reaching to the majority of our Indians. And that's why you can see, even in Tamil Nadu, at other states, we have to understand why these large, youthful protests are happening. Today we talk, we talk about the Jimmy uh, Republic, uh, dividend, the great uh, people of 19 to 20, demographic dividend. We want to hit the demographic dividend. But actually, in reality, what exactly we are doing for them? People don't do anything for them. They just plan. They keep on saying so many things. They keep on like, we're going to do for this, we're going to do for youth. They announce a lot of measures. But actually, in reality, how much it is translating to who it is reaching are two different things. That's why today, if you look at Tamil Nadu, we can know about it. The lives of people came for Jalikatu, which is a traditional game of Tamils, to take a bull. But under that reality which I was there a few months before, they were saying that there is amazing restlessness in our state because the political situation is so volatile and no one is focusing on the ground and it's very soon they're going to vent out in a different form, we don't know in which form. And we could see that Jalikatu is, we should not see as a mere anger on taming the bull, like you know, when the Supreme Court said against taming the bull, it's not just about that, it is their frustration. Mere, you want to bring the demographic dividend. Unless we identify them, we recognize them, and unless we challenge their energy, till now, India is going to give, India is going to see a rise of this kind of protest, including Andhra Pradesh, including Kalingana, and including you recently had seen in Gujarat. This is what is going to happen. This has to be addressed. And we talk about, and one more thing India has to focus is on education. And we look at most of the India is the rural India and the urban India. In urban there are a lot of sectors. And if you look at each school, the urban schools, there is no one out there. There are no right playgrounds, there are no right facilities. Including when I was growing up, I never had a playground in my own school. I thought it was confined to my times, it was confined to them, but actually you if you look at it right now, all the urban areas doesn't have a playground. And here we want to reap the advantage of demographic dividend, yet we don't even, we can't even provide a basic playground to our own children.